Same old, same old. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's even better. Definitely got crushed. All right, sorry for the um, the moment of silence at the beginning here. Um, all right, so we're working a little project here. I'm going to show you also something very cool in a bit, which is not something that most of us actually see outside a LCD screen. So I'm going to show this to you. 
um, in a bit. Because, um, like I said before, uh, this channel is pretty much for everybody else actually to learn and experience or see my mistakes and my screw ups. And yesterday, for some reason, um, I had a bit of a technical um, issues by you know having some lags with my 2010 iMac. And I think it's due probably on the fact that I don't have enough RAM um, installed in there. So OBS wasn't actually working properly with the iMac um, uh, anyway that I got for the Intel i3 the 2010 model and it was lagging pretty bad so I'm just like I swapped everything back into my Mac Pro so it's much more reliable when it comes to no lags. And so I do have but I do have a bit of a lag in there but it's like millisecond you can't barely see it but anyway uh, beside the point so right here um, on the video that I was um, working on so I'm just gonna redo everything over because I had a bit of an issue yesterday and I thought I fried my um, special edition motherboard of the key lime yesterday and I just found out that one of those little brackets that supports the um, the screen uh, shorted out a couple of things on the motherboard and thank God it didn't fry the motherboard so I was pretty lucky on that one because I kind of need a, um, a special edition because they do come up with a Firewire port where the regular model do not come with a Firewire port. And when it's time to actually just do a target this mode, it's pretty hard to do it on a USB. Actually, you can't do it on a USB. <laughs> so um, on the video, because I just, as you noticed at the beginning, um, I started to take the uh, tangerine um, screen or whatever, the, uh, the lid part of it, off the machine. And now I'm just like swapping everything over. And I want you to help me out here. I've got a name for this machine. I call it the um, Freak Clam or the Clam Freak. That's the reason. I just can't name my own machine anymore. And the reason why I'm calling this is... That is originally, I call it the Clam Freak, but I want you guys to give me a name for this machine because it's going to be a Frankenstein iBook G3 clamshell. Uh, meaning that nothing's actually going to be working as intended. It's not going to be assembled properly because basically I'm going to use that as a workbench where I'm going to be testing pretty much everything power inverter hard drives um, other screens and um, and the reason why I'm doing this because the tangerine part of it I'm not sure if you notice but it's, it's all beveled in it's all damaged the hinge is actually damaged and um, yeah so it's a fun way of saying time to do a different way of working on machines. That one is reversed. So yeah, so I'm just swapping all the good parts or some of the good parts because I know this guy's got a line in there and I simply do not care. Um, on the clamshell, sorry, on the tangerine part of it, sadly enough, it's got a bit of an issue uh, with the antenna sticking out. So I'm just gonna do this. And also on this guy, I'm going to try to be very, very, very careful on taking that thing apart because this is the next project I'm going to show you is how to take the CFL tube or the tube off the screen. And I learned kind of a hard way because I did break only one so far and I was rebuild, uh, able to actually rebuild one of the screen because the screen was working but there was no light. So I thought power inverter is actually um, totally gone. And it turned out actually the ball was gone. So it it was not, not too much of a challenge, but it was my first bulb replacement on these type of screens. So it was it was fun, it was challenging. Uh, and I did cut myself. Because <laughs> yeah, they are razor sharp. They are very sharp aluminum. Ooh. So you don't want to go in there, buddy. All right, who are you? These actually were for the screen. 
on this, you're using something else different, or? Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Those doesn't fit. All right, let's go get the uh, box of screws. Because as you notice, oops, one fell. Um, as you noticed, one of the, uh, the clamshell actually came with those type of screws. So now we're just going to have to figure it out which one does what. So we will test them all. It could be this guy, that one. Yep, that one fits perfect. And I just, personally, I don't care. For as long as it holds the screen in place, that's all that matters. It does have a bit of, oh, that's right, hang on a minute. I forgot to do one thing. The shield. I forgot the shield. That's probably the reason, the reason why it doesn't fit nice and snug in there. Let's go find a shield. Are you the one? A little bit banged up, but it's all good. Like I said, this is going to be behind anyway. Don't really care. I think that's how it goes. And obviously, I put everything together. <laughs> you go here. And so we've got to go there. Like a glove. Let's see if I can just do this instead. Right around the corner, do not cut any wires. Thank you. And let's put it back in there. All right, so it's got a nice little snug fit to it. And I don't want to damage uh, where did I put it? I don't want to damage this wire for sure. Because these are pretty sharp. One wire at a time. There you go. Plastic, always use plastic, no sharp tools in this area. Good. All right, now let's put that ground back in there. So yes, I'm open actually for a name for this machine because I've, I've seen some YouTube channels out there and some of you out there just giving some weird name to, you know, some of the Macs actually that's been like butchered or tampered with, like the Frackintosh or the Frankenstein. So I'm always intrigued. So we're, we are actually open for a name for this guy. And in the process, because sadly enough, like, like, like I said earlier, uh, bumped me through some technical difficulties. Um, I also bumped me to a hard drive that actually is fully compatible or works even better than the one I had uh, in my previous videos and I totally forgot about these guys okay so the screen is done I don't care if this is exposed do you see it? oh you somewhat see it um, this guy is just freaking amazing. Um, I think I bought this a while back ago and on Amazon, and this actually works perfect in our little project here. Because um, this guy is actually set, there's two sides on this guy. This guy is master, and this guy is slave. 
And obviously these machines are mostly op operate into Mac OS 9, so it will boot on this guy. And unless you ask to boot from Mac OS X. This one is the first generation Mac OS 10. I think it's the Aqua. Um, so yeah, that's pretty neat. And obviously this port is really nice. It fits perfectly on the motherboard, no issues. Now the issues that I got is putting everything back in there. Hopefully I'm not gonna damage anything. So uh, what I'll do this time, oh, it does come, okay. Um, what we'll do is we will have a bit of a support, which I did not have earlier. So we're just gonna use you. Where's number two? I don't have number two. Clamstein? I could go with Clamstein. What all my screws for screen hitters? Like I said, I'm interested actually. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what kind of name you can actually give to a It's Alive machine. And because I didn't notice um, earlier when I was doing the um, the assembly of the previous machine that the entire uh, bottom part actually was moving which could also are you going on there yeah that's a long one which didn't have any support so what I'll do is probably just bend these guys upward a little bit so I'm not gonna short anything again <laughs> Uh, then I just had picked up one. Yes, I did. And like I said, this guy I don't really care because it does have a line on it, but the uh, the image is actually pretty clear. And then we'll keep the other screen for uh, the Genesis. That's right guys, I do have an iBook clamshell Genesis. Pretty stoked. Uh, I just replaced the SSD disc on this guy. And um, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty very, very, very happy with it. Um, sadly enough, there's a lot of mess when it comes to the wires. So um, I'm definitely gonna be looking for An alternate way to actually clean that up because it's pretty messy in there. Uh, there's one wire that does, um, you know, hang around there, so it's just hanging. And I don't like that because if it's on time, you have to take the machine apart, well, it puts a little bit more, more stress on, on the cable. And this is not what we want. That guy looks a little bit too short for this though, but anyway, we'll figure it out. Can you fit in there? Because I, I need some kind of a... Uh, I think you are. Cool. So this is what the problem was. So I'm just going to bend this guy up a little bit. Or I can use my Dremel and just cut it. Nice and snug. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it like if it was originally set up there. I'm just gonna take my little, or we can just break it apart right now. Because I don't care. Without damaging the board. Because lately I know my luck. So I'll just, I don't care. It might probably scratch the screen or I might probably use a, a metal cutter. Um, I could just do that. Okay, so I swapped the uh, the memory, which actually was originally uh, on this guy, put it onto my uh, my other one, and then back on that guy. So we're gonna have roughly about 420, 460 meg of RAM. Uh, I think.
think we are good on this guy. Or oh, just to be on the safe side. I guess I should have done that before installing it, but especially in this area is where I shorted those little resistors. Like I said, I don't care. These go back on there. I will cut them later, so. I just don't want to reproduce the same issues that I had earlier or yesterday. Okay, so this is good for this guy. And again, this is gonna, I don't really care. This is my little new Frankenstein or portable Frankenstein. Um, okay, so this is, anyway, so I was talking about this in my previous videos, you guys watched that. Because on a Gemini, um, so as you can see, uh, this is the same model without obviously the compact flash. So this is the slave part and then on the other side you have the master. So they are very handy and like I said, I think I bought those on Amazon. Um, I should buy more of these because they're really stupid handy. Very, very handy. Um, on the Gemini, this is the one I used. Um, if you take it apart, I use a dogfish, I believe it is. Yes, yeah, a dogfish uh, solid state drive SSD. And this actually goes in this little unit. So it comes with the screws, proper port, and uh, yeah, it boots right away, no problem. Obviously, all you have to do is just wipe the drive in order to make it visible, and you can install Mac OS 9 or Mac OS 10. Because before, I was using this guy, which was, uh, actually, it works, but kind of a bit of a pain when it's time to actually connect on the motherboard, so. But these, these guys are just freaking amazing for this. So I'm pretty happy. Okay, so. Yeah. Oh, we do have an Ethernet port. Ooh. <laughs> All right. So I think we could easily just update the system if we really want to. And obviously, I put some electrical tape around it because I I could have maybe shorted from there or shorted from here. So I should have known better. So this is a little project for you guys to look. So see, it wasn't too bad. So obviously the fact we don't have a keyboard attached to it, we need to attach an external one. Let's put some power, unless we get another smoke show. <laughs> we have juice. We have no power. Again, what's going on here? Weird, there's something shorting out in there. Let's have a look here. This is making no sense at all. No, it's shorting out again. Maybe I put the, uh, the drive in the wrong way. This is highly probable. Let's try now. There you go. That was actually the wrong screen. <laughs> I put the wrong screen in there. Okay, so it is working. Um, let's take a report again. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. 
No? Perfect. Because that one's actually, it's got a red screen on it. Not a big fan of it. Oh boy. But it's all good. Because I like this one better, even though it does have a line. But I like this one better. So let's flip that bad boy. That one's gonna be an easy swap anyway. Or should be easy. Yeah, I can't see. It's, it's too bad you can't smell what's going on there because there's something I burn in there and it just smells like good old electronic component burning. I don't mind that kind of smell. I know it's toxic. I know it's not supposed to smell like this, but you know what? I don't care. Oh, oh no, no, don't fly too far. There you go. I need you. So now we can just be removing this, remove the ground. Because I have a screen. Um, it's not super bright. I want to make sure it doesn't have any other issues. Uh, no. You know what? I'm gonna say goodbye to the shield. Of course you did. I wonder, do I have my Dremel here? I don't think I do. I'm gonna put a sticker on it that says, I see red. You know what, I, I just don't care. There. And the, one, the reason why I'm putting like the red and green sticker on it is because it's got some lines. So it's not to be reused on Another machine. I got more room on this guy without the shield. Uh, it's always fun. I love projects like this. Let's put the ground back on this guy. Oh, on that note too, um, when it comes to screens, since we are in that screen area, um, there is one guy actually on YouTube that was, you know, asking questions. And that's what I want. I want you guys to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Because I'm learning from you guys too, so I'm, I don't have an answer to everything. Uh, but, but, <laughs> this guy is annoying to be honest with you. Let's take it apart and just cut it. We'll just cut that part. This is like so bloody annoying. The reason why I'm putting it back in there is for support. Because for the weight of the screen, the entire thing over here just moves. And I don't want to break the board or break the, uh, the base of the... Uh, The brace of the, uh, the, uh, the machine. It could be the board could crack, it could be damaged with all of with the stress, so... I'm thinking about using my Dremel for this, but... Let's see what this guy will do. It will do! 
not pretty but it will do and I've got tons of those anyway so I don't really care again we'll just straighten it back so it doesn't hit anything Let's see where it goes now Yeah, that's a little better. All right, let's do you first because it's easier to get to. Guaranteed it's move. Going to move. You stay. There you go. And I was, it's kind of funny actually, because I was looking at some of the, um, the videos that I've made about, you know, these machine, way back when I first started, I think that was roughly about two years ago, and, uh, you know, kind of scared to take these guys apart. And, you know, just like everybody else, it gets pretty intimidated, because, you know, intimidating, I should say with all the amount of screws that holds everything together and and now I just easily can do this with my eyes closed so I got quite a few projects going on um, I've got a Lombard that needs to be rebuilt and then not entirely sure what's going on because he didn't provide the, the power supply uh, but I'll use one of mine and see what's going on with it I think one of them I probably have an issue with um, the screen. Not entirely sure, but we'll figure it out. I keep forgetting putting this guy back in there. All the time, I keep forgetting it. Well, you can go in there. And also the fact that I did have, again, technical issues yesterday. Um, the fact I'm also working on a Gemini um, iBook, which for those of you that do not know this machine, it is a um, assistive um, technology um, where actually, this is exactly the same type of model, but uh, instead of having the screen facing me, it faced the other way around. Um, there's a lot of work that have, they have done to it and I think my model is at over 11,000 that was built and sadly enough the hard drive failed and the touch screen which is a really really neat feature um, it cannot be used if I don't have a driver now the question that I've got for all of you is uh, was wondering if whether or not you guys will be able to share the to all of us all Mac enthusiasts and Apple enthusiasts and iBook G3 clamshells enthusiasts um, uh, if you can actually provide or give us a link uh, for the driver installation driver for a touch screen uh, T shark I believe was the uh, company that used to make them also a Genesis um, and I think it was assistive technology hang on a minute I do have the panel with you for this yeah it is actually assistive uh, technology the guy that I was talking to was the one actually that built those Genesis uh, Matt Sadly enough, this is part of the lid for the Genesis. Uh, the computer actually sits on my computer desk right now, but um, so yeah. So let me hang on a minute. So assistive technology. I tried to email the guys, but they're no longer in business. Or they may still be, but you can't find any driver for it. Control panel extension, whatever. Uh, the whole nine yard cannot be found. Um, even to the uh, famous good old library website um, where they give you pretty much almost everything for free um, sadly enough they don't have it so which is a big bummer well, that's a bit better so if you guys know of or you have it please do let me know please do share with all of us 
because uh, it's all about you know helping each other you know like in order to be able to revive or restore those machines so if you have it please do contact us and um, you'll be doing us a lot of favor I need a keyboard unless it's cooking again I don't smell anything burning this time If I don't see any power here, it means we're cooking something. There you go. There you go. That's better. Not too much backward because I'm uh, actually it's just going to go. Whoops. The other screen was behind. So I do have a line actually showing up here and I just literally don't care because at least I see something. I don't see red anymore. So as you can see, all the blinky blinky light going on here and it's working as it should. I, I really love this, you know, drive caddy. It's really, really nice. Um, and I did actually change the, uh, the ribbon on this guy. Oh yeah, that's right. I was talking about the uh, screen swap. So as you can see, there's a line right in the middle. Well, not really in the middle, but right here. So sadly enough, I thought it was the ribbon being defective, but it's not the case. Um, the problem is actually on the, uh, the flip side of, let go. Because there's a circuit board, obviously on this side. And I think one of them is actually, probably could be a bad capacitor or a bad connection somewhere around the, the line. So, um, yeah, so that's, that is a bit of a issue there. Which one is this anyway? It was a Samsung. Okay. So to answer to the question, you know, which has been already answered, but, uh, some of you actually that is watching this is if you do end up to have, I'm just going to shut it down. can say good night okay so when it comes to the screens um, just like in this case that one has got a massive vinegar syndrome issues so as you can see um, it could have you know a bad bulb it could be a crack it could be damaged it could be a vinegar syndrome just like this guy um, when it comes to a screen replacement um, you can have I'm gonna make some room here for you Please do not short anything out. Oh my god, this is ugly. Ugly shell? <laughs> not a future name for this. But anyway, um, you have different brand. Uh, this one is a Samsung. I'm gonna show you the yeah, different ribbon for different brand. Because you can get an LG if I'm not mistaken. Hewlett Packard for sure. IBM for sure. Um, so when it comes to doing a screen replacement, just make sure that you have the ribbon that goes with it. Uh, this guy, I'm not entirely sure. This guy is an IBM. So when you do like any brand and my own experience, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but in all their screen replacement that I've done so far, I can swap a Samsung to an IBM, or an IBM to an LG, or an LG to a Hewlett Packard, or whatever brand you have, uh, whatever iBook G3 clamshell you have as a donor, do include the original ribbon. The ribbon is specifically made for that screen. This end doesn't really matter because the data output from the board is the same, but the data in board is different on this end. So if you have an HP screen, stick with an HP ribbon. Do not swap it with a Samsung ribbon. Uh, so you know what? Let's give that a try actually. Let's see how it goes, just for, just for shit and giggles. I have a Samsung, which is the one I see red. <laughs> actually, hang on a minute. 
Let's do this. Uh, where's my mouse? Here's my mouse. Just hang tight. Hang tight. Takes forever to load. Come on. There you go. No. Cancel. I see red. Ready? Let's do this. I see red. <laughs> Let's fool around and have a good time here. Um, I know this guy is meant to be taken apart anyway, so I'm not going to use my Frankenstein because I love my Frankenstein or whatever you want to call it. Because I will name this machine from you, not from me. I want you guys to give me a name. All right. Give it a name. That's all I'm asking from you. And we're slowly increasing actually for the amount of subscribers. Hey, the more we get, the more actually we might probably end up to have a price. Could be an Amazon gift card, which would be great for all of you. I can't sell my subscription, but I might probably come back actually, because I hate to say this, but there is some stuff that you no longer see on eBay. Um, okay, so this one I'm not entirely sure what's in there, but I'm reusing that screen for a Genesis. And yes, I will show it to you. She is fully operational. Okay, so let's see. This one is a Samsung. Let's put a... Do I have an IBM kicking around? This one I have no idea what it is. Not even labeled. This do IBM. Right, right? Red was this way. Some of them will fit, some won't. I think this guy is just being not nice to me. There you go. Or maybe not compatible. Oh, there you go, it fits. So we'll see how it goes by putting the wrong ribbon on a wrong screen. So this one is a Samsung. I'm just doing this for shit and giggles, so you guys kind of know exactly what's going on. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, Ko. How you doing, big girl? I got a feeling this is wrong, but let's see how it goes. <laughs> if it blows, if it catch on fire, <laughs> so be it. Everything else is going to be live. That's what I do. This is how I learn things, right? It's like you have to test things. If it goes on fire, well, woohoo! Cool. I am not using the original drive. Hang on a minute. Which one did I have? I don't think it was IBM for that guy. I guess it was. Let's have a look. I'm pretty much sure it's going to be, whoops. Oh, there's a smoke. There's smoke. Doesn't like it. <laughs> Doesn't like it. Okay, see, well, this is what's going to happen. We have a smoke show. Ooh, smells good too. Let's see if we plug the other one back in there. So she doesn't like it. Amazingly enough, it's still kicking. These machines are freaking tough. That's the abuse we put on these machines, man. This is the abuse. Um, the light is pretty low on this guy. 
So this is what I'm gonna show you in a bit here, which is like freaking cool. Um, sadly enough, yes. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm gonna assume that probably the light bulb is about ready to go on this guy. And uh, this is what I promised you, what they look like outside the machine. So let's bring that bulb without breaking it. For those of you that have never seen an LCD screen bulb lit up, and it might kind of be in the way a little bit, but bingo. It will, get, it will get brighter as it gets warmer. So that is pretty cool. So I think I might probably reuse this guy. Uh, for some reason, some of the inverter, um, you have to double check making sure that all of these working properly because some of them actually make the bulb actually a little bit dimmer uh, so if they're about ready to fail, they're not going to be as bright. But again, these need a bit of a time to actually warm up. Um, I heard also online that you can actually put LEDs in it. Um, I've never actually seen it. Uh, some people that did try, uh, it looks like it's too bright on the top, not enough in the middle, and not enough at the bottom. So if you do have a USB or an LED uh, controller or a driver for it, um, yeah, you can try, but me personally, it's just like I like the fact that it stays with like that kind of, you know, tube. So that's what it is. Now we'll try another one without breaking it. So now we'll show you exactly how to extract that bulb. And we'll use it from, because like I said, I want to use this screen for the Gemini. And, whoops, disconnect. So the bulb actually sits right on top, obviously. It just sits right there. Um, you gotta be very careful because these guys are like the aluminum part of it, which is also a reflective part in order to reflect all the light from the tube all the way down to the bottom. Um, it's kind of aluminum foil inside, but here's like a really, really razor sharp piece of aluminum so you have to be very careful not to cut yourself which I have cut myself several times with this I see red let's go get a screwdriver have I lost it already I forgot I lost my screwdriver where did I put it Ah, uh, this is the problem with me. I keep losing things. And I bet you 100% it's right in front of me. Okay, so if I see red, no, that's another one. Which one is this? Oh, that's my backup. Um, actually, speaking of backup, now we'll work on this later. What did I do with it? Oh, right here. Where Even though I try to be as organized as possible, I keep looking for stuff. So anyway, um, I shouldn't have fluid on my desk, but anyway. So the bulb actually sits on there. Uh, there's different pieces uh, for you to get to it. And again, you have to be very careful because they're very, very, very fragile. They're small little things. So there's four screws, Phillips, to be removed. So that's two. Three and four. see if uh, 
All right, four little screws. I'm just gonna use this, so like a little guitar pick will actually do the trick too. So, uh, we're just gonna make sure that we can remove everything without too much issues. So there's another set of screws that needs to be removed. So this is the entire circuit board for um, for the LCD. Okay, so now what I have to do is gently, just want to double check that we haven't forgotten any screws. This guy is actually to, just to hold the, um, the board. But yeah, so I don't care about this guy, it's got vinegar syndrome anyway, so so we'll just gently unclip the metal part. Gently, because the bulb is actually right behind it. So click and a click, click and a click, click and a click. So I'm hoping that I'm not too much in the way here, so you guys can see. Now the fun part is this guy. Not working. Let's go get the... Uh, I'm hoping these guys might probably do the trick. Uh, they're pretty thick. There you go. That one is thinner. There you go. Pop. Pop. If you want to reuse it, just be, again, be careful. This is like stupid sharp. And there's another set of clips here. There you go, and it falls off pretty easy. And then we have this little guy here. So I'll just move that guy out of the way. And I don't want to cut myself. Hang on a minute. I just want to make sure that I'm not getting into anything stupid. Okay, so the white wire, you can see the somewhat can see. The white wire actually runs straight from here. So and it goes across and will loop around. And this is where you should be very careful. Oh my god, no wonder they call it a vinegar syndrome. Holy moly. That smells vinegar big time on that part. I swear to god I'm gonna cut myself. There you go. And I think we got the entire Oh, don't. No benty benty. <laughs> if it bends, you break the bulb. And for some reason, it doesn't want to come out. You gotta be extremely patient. You can somewhat see it, it's right there. Now it's a matter of extracting it without breaking it. And she's almost out. And then wiggle, wiggle, and off she goes. Pretty cool. So I'm still gonna have to go and learn a little bit about, you know, taking these guys because it almost came off. And you know what? Who cares? Hang on a minute. Let's see if there's a way. No, it's one piece. Uh, 
I'm just looking at a way actually if we can do this better. But there's not much, but you can see right in there, this is the aluminum part is what reflects the light inside the LCD. And this is your polarizer, which is the problem actually most of the time with these machines, uh, with these screens anyway. And right in here is what feeds the light behind the polarizer. So let's see if we can take it apart. So you it's gone anyway, so I don't really care about it. And I kid you not, that guy smells like vinegar. Okay, so I'll just drop the screen out of the way. Hopefully I'm not going to break it in the process. Oh yeah, it's glued. Woo! Yeah, it does smell. Oh moly! That's pretty strong. So it went through and through. Holy moly, that smells. I've never seen, like all the screens that I replaced so far, this one is the worst. And obviously it's like the chemicals is out. And this is another aluminum foil, polarizer. And this is, oh my God, this smells bad. And this is how it reflects the light behind. Because the light actually just goes in there and just like with all those little dots that you see in there, it just shine the light on all the panel and just the image is all about the little circuit going through the LCD and polarizer and a whole whack of other stuff and the circuit board. <coughs> oh my God. God, this is bad. Woo! Recycling bin. I swear to God, it's kind of full. So yeah, so this is how we replace a um, a light bulb. So I've got two now. So let's test it. Let's give it a try. See how bright it is, because that one was somewhat bright, but not bright enough for my taste. So it could be an issue with either the power inverter or it could be the bulb. Let's go get another one. So see how cool it is? No breaky breaky the tube. Okay, so now it's going to be right on top. See how bright that thing is? It ain't stupid bright though. Well, let's we'll just let it warm up actually, so we'll see how it goes. Or it could be the brightness too, which is set up as low or a medium. But yeah, so this is how they work anyway. So that's pretty cool. Thank you. All right, the moment you guys been waiting for. I love to extend the pleasure. So this is bulb number two. Please do not break. All right, so I'm done with you, but I'm going to keep the screen for oh, my room. Oh my god, that vinegar smells. This little guy. Oh, and by the way, I need to take a picture of it too, because I'm supposed to take a picture to some of the guys on my cat. But um, yeah, that is my new toy. Now, sadly enough, okay, so this, 
this is what the problem is with this guy. Um, this is the original drive from this guy. Hard drive failed. I've got no driver. Uh, actually, everything else was on this guy. Um, I've got absolutely no driver whatsoever on the Mac OS 9 to be able to use this touch screen. It does have also a vinegar syndrome on this. Uh, as you can see, it does start to have that little scratch that you see on the side. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. Hang on a minute, we'll see. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, there's a bit on there. There you go, right there. So that is uh, the vinegar, vinegar syndrome. It's not as bad as the one we just took apart earlier. Uh, but that one is actually starting to get there. So the screen that I uh, showed you earlier is going to be on this guy. There is a film right in front of it that actually allows you to do the touch screen, whether you use a stylus or I think the finger could actually do the trick. Um, but in the process, this guy, because I did replace, I'm just gonna go very gently because I don't like moving around with this because this is the sketchy part. There's wires everywhere. Um, so there's one actually laying around, now kicking around, here it is. Well, are you doing? Yes. So there's one here. I have no idea where it's going. Whoever worked previously on this, they put the wrong screw in it, damaged a few things in there, and I was able to actually fix the most of it. Um, you can see here the, that new drive that I showed you with the, uh, the SSD Dogfish. That is the one that I installed in there. It's got a fresh macOS 9 uh, 921 or 922 install, uh, but I need the driver in order to be able to make the screen work um, with the touch, um, the assistive touch. This is the uh, the entire board that makes things actually work. And the board here for special because you get a power on it, and you got USB for some reason. I have power, but it doesn't work um, when you actually attach a thumb drive or the USB keyboard or anything. It doesn't work. I do have five volt coming out but nothing, if I attach a device, it doesn't work, doesn't see it. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of it. So, like I said, this guy is going to be replaced for the screen. I'm not entirely sure what brand it is, uh, but we'll figure it out later. So the screen is gonna be replaced, power inverter, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun little project for sure. So, uh, so as the airport card, I installed it, but for now it doesn't see my network. Even though I did change to a WEP to a WPA, uh, still doesn't connect for some reason. It keeps telling me wrong password, even though I just read the entire network and I know my password. So we'll see where it goes. I'll, I might probably put another card in it. So I'm just going to be very careful closing it in. Right now it's got a bit of an issue with the screen. Um, like I said, it's gonna have to be replaced anyway, but here goes nothing. Might have a little bit too much light showing, but you can see it's booting from with the finder. I barely see anything. Except when I go on top. See that bar there? So I think this is an odd, uh, it could be the ribbon. I'm not entirely sure. Now it dims all the way down, you get to see all the pixels in there. So I'm, I do apologize if you don't see too much in there, but she's working there. So I booked Genesis and now it's just matter because right now it's like I can't see anything on the menu. I see file edit view and then the window is fading and everything else is out until I see the clock. And when it comes to the control strip, uh, I barely see anything in there. So, um, and obviously the cursor doesn't work because I don't have the driver for the touch screen. So yeah, so I'll just shut it off. Nope. So 
So yeah, so uh, it's a neat little machine. Needs some love. And I'll take that picture I was supposed to take. Gently. Where are you again? Here you are. I might as well just take a picture of it right now. So anyway, so this this is an interesting little project, and I'm just gonna take a uh, picture also for the T shark. So that uh, so this model is the eleven thousand five hundred and sixty seventy six. Sorry, eleven thousand five hundred and seventy six model build, and there are more actually after this. And um, yeah, so. That, that is the problem because apparently there's a so-called uh, display or genesis, genesis display or display genesis uh, with the, among the other features that goes with this machine and as of now the fact that like I said the hard drive failed I cannot get to any of the driver to actually make it work again so I'm pretty much sure I'm also the 11,576th user um that is using this machine and the fact that again the hard drive failed i no longer have the driver to in order to be able to make this little guy tick again so um if you do have the driver or the control panels or the installation disc or the thumb drive or whatever um do let us know do let me know because uh, I'm pretty much sure that people like me are going to be a little bit desperate in order to be able to make this little guy working because I cannot find it anywhere. Um, so yeah, keep us posted. Um, but until then, I'm just going to call it a day for this video today. And um, hopefully one of you, I beg you please, uh, if you do have the driver for this machine operating under Mac OS 9, uh, do let us know keep us posted keep keep in touch like we need this machine to be operational and I'm pretty much sure that I'm not the only one looking for it uh, there are several others I'm only the 1100 uh, sorry 11,576 individual looking all over a place for it <laughs> so you're not the only one I feel for you and um, again I'm just gonna end this up here um, if you like this video Please subscribe, two thumbs up. If you don't, I'd like to know why you don't like it, right? So it could be many things, and I'd like to improve this channel for all of you so that you can have a, and, you know, enjoy this video, this channel, so everybody else learn from it. Alrighty, thank you very much. Have fun.